this is for me it was really hard to just grow up without without a dad and then you know my my brother was older and i was like okay i just i, st I still have my brother and then one day my mom calls me two days before christmas crying which hurt me immediately because i heard her crying and she was like your brother committed suicide and i was like what what Are you ready? Welcome into episode five of Living Large with Mark Doner. Welcome into the podcast, episode five of Living Large, where you can catch it at 6 a.m. every Wednesday morning on the app Castbox and then noon on my YouTube channel. I apologize for being a day late this week. I was in London and I'm a little bit ill, so if you hear my voice crack, that's because I've been sick. Today's guest, a good old friend of mine, the Austrian, the German speaker. Johannes Bartel. Hey, <laughs> thanks for having me. Give us some German. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Hallo, wie geht's euch alle da? Um, ich weiß nicht, wenn jetzt nur Deutsch redet, dann wieder auszucken ein bisschen. Schätze mal. For all you Germans out there that know what he just said, you're welcome. I don't know what he just said. Uh, you're my first guest on the podcast, Live in Large, mm -hmm. that is from outside of Los Angeles. And I, picked a, I couldn't have picked a further place. <laughs> Austria, where is that? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's in Europe. It's not with the kangaroos, what uh, everybody thinks. Oh, good I might. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not that's not us. And it's like close to Italy, Germany, uh, you know, Spain, France, like right there. The capital is Vienna, exactly. right? You guys have nice sausages. Wiener Schnitzel. Yep. Mana Schnitten. Mana Schnitten. Oh, you love those. Yes, they have a really them. nice dessert out there in Austria. That's not really a dessert. It's more like a snack. It's like a Kit Kat bar, kind of. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but let's talk a little. Before we start talking about you, you're you're all into the fitness. You like to do the Bati Ba Bottle is your mm -hmm. company that you have going on. Before we talk about your journey from Austria over to Los Angeles to pursue acting, social media, uh, dating a very good looking girl. Uh, <laughs> What did you think of the fight this week? Logan Paul versus oh, KSI. First of all, so I was surprised that Deji lost that long. Against Jake. Yeah, against Jake, yeah. So that was the first big surprise. I was like, okay, Jake's going to destroy him. But Physically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh my God. Um, but the first fight was great. Then second fight, obviously Logan. First two rounds, I was like, bro, my boy's looking good. Right. He was shredded. And like his punches were on point. He looked like a professional boxer. He was fast. And I was like, okay, he's going to destroy him too in the right. ring. <laughs> but then it ended in a draw. What do you yeah. think of that? I was honestly, I was disappointed. Like, um, I don't know. It left me in a weird feeling because I wanted someone to win. Right. You were, it was just like, what the hell? What the yeah. Fuck like, just why? I was so surprised. I was like, I didn't even know to that point that it was possible to get a draw in boxing. No thought, one was thinking it. Everyone no was like, one. Logan's going to win or KSI is going to win. No one ever thought tie. <laughs> no. And I was like, okay, that was like, that's a joke, right? <laughs> yeah. And it came out that Logan had 64 like landed punches I saw that, to 46 yeah. on KSI. What do you think like that event means for social media? Um, it just shows, I think it shows the power of social media now. Like at one point, like I watched it on, on YouTube and at one point I saw 850,000 people tuned in to see the fight. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people for two YouTubers. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. And, um, I think the highest number was 1.2, 1.3 million people bought the tickets for YouTube. At $10 a pop. At, yep. That's 10 to $13 so, million dollars <laughs> yeah. in sales. Yeah. Which is pretty crazy because, like, if you look at like a Mayweather fight, how much is it? it's like one hundred and fifty dollars? Yeah, you probably. I mean, I don't know how many people watch those fights, but I think it's. I don't know, but that's that's also different because like they show all of those, um, like the fight in like all the bars everywhere, so right. they make money with that as well. But oh, okay, okay. So it's like you can't really compare it. It's smart marketing, in my opinion, just because it's like all right, more people are gonna buy it if it's ten dollars yeah. versus if you make it a hundred dollars, who's really gonna also spend you, that exactly also you need to see the audience like who's your audience right and which you know you know what bothers me when people bitch about spending ten dollars <laughs> to buy this this thing the amount of videos that we make and you pay zero dollars to watch them <laughs> yeah. and you can't spend ten dollars one time to watch a fight and it was super entertaining and right. it started at what 9 a.m like over here in la 9 a.m to like 3 p.m six hours of entertainment for ten dollars. Where do you get that? When you go to the movies, it's like what thirty five for two because tickets. I think the the issue is is oh Netflix is only ten dollars a month, 
and I can watch whatever I want. But like I said, we do a lot of content for free, whatever. We got that out of the way. Uh, you're a fitness guru. Let's talk mm -hmm. a little bit about your journey from Austria mm -hmm. to London. Um, <laughs> to London, I, I never, Lon never went to London, <laughs> to LA. What made you come over across the pond? Um, it was it was acting actually. So when I was I think twelve, I, I can't remember. Like I think it was when I was twelve years old. I watched um, Terminator with my dad in the in the living room, and I saw him. And I was like, oh my god, so cool. And then he told me, you know, that he's from Austria. Now he lives in the United States. Who's he? My my dad. My dad told me. Now he's who's like Terminator. Oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, Guys, I, come on. Oh, yeah. I didn't mention that. <laughs> oh my god. So I saw Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Terminator on tv so for me that was just like whoa that's like incredible someone from austria can actually make it make it yeah, yeah exactly okay. and then to be honest at that point like at that time i didn't know what the u.s was right i was just like okay i want to do it too and then um yeah so then i wanted to become an actor like obviously with fitness because that was my passion like when i grew up at the age of six i started playing soccer tennis volleyball i was in a swim team like I did basically everything. All sports, athletics. All sports, yeah. Were you inspired time. to do athletic stuff like fitness by Arnold? Um, not really. Like I started doing push-ups just because I loved the transformation that I saw within myself. I was like, oh my God, I'm Like, now what is this? Oh, it's getting bigger. It's titties. It's, yeah. It's <laughs> but um, I think I, I showed you that one picture when I was 14, right? When right, I was oiled shredded, up, I was bro. shredded. So all I did was I didn't spend any money on, on candy or whatever. Like I, I didn't like it. All I did was spend money on, on weights. Protein. No, on weights and like uh, okay. <laughs> a, like a pull up bar that you put in between the the door frame. Right. Um, right. So that's where I spent my money when I was younger, <laughs> and I just worked out like crazy. And then it, it, you know, I don't know. Like I think at the age of fourteen, fifteen, or sixteen, somewhere that that's when I first got my first uh, gym membership, which is what was super exciting for me and then I had all the equipment and then I got really into it I was like okay now I know I need to really figure out how to work my body I'm like okay I, I can't just do push-ups because at one point my arm's gonna come over here and I don't work my back so that's when I really watched all those videos online and was like okay that's what I have to do fitness, fitness. so guys before we get into the whole podcast with with Johannes to get to get a little grasp of what we're going to talk about. Johannes moved here from Austria. Mm -hmm. He started learning English. It was mm -hmm. kind of like the first thing, going to school. Then you got into fitness, and then you got into social media, acting. Well, no, you got into acting first, then you got into social media. Correct, yeah. Now you're kind of blending your fitness with your social media. Correct. Um, before you moved to America. Mm -hmm. America. Uh, what made you make that decision? Like, hey, I want to move to America, and how did you go about doing that? So, because a lot of people watching and listening are obviously from other countries and they're probably thinking, gosh, to get because the podcast is living large, live in mm -hmm. L.A. How do I get to L.A.? Because there's so I know for you, like I mean, now we're going to talk about this, how mm -hmm. difficult it is for someone outside America to come to America and live here and work here and try to pursue their dreams. Yeah, absolutely. It was it was um, a tough time. Um, so back in Austria, I was a personal trainer and I knew I wanted to move to the U.S. at one point. So um, all I did was I saved my money, invested that money to make... Very key, very crucial. Yeah, yeah, very, very important. Just bear with me. Uh, I'll get you to that. It's but very It's long story. very, very important because um, I knew I needed money to start all over here in the because United States. in the United States, you would have no money. You exactly. wouldn't be able to make money. Exactly, because... When you move to, I'll, I'll just start again. So uh, <laughs> I made money as a personal trainer, reinvested that, made more money. Um, and then when I felt comfortable, I was like, okay, now it's the time to move to the US um, and study acting. So um, left everything behind, sold everything I had in Austria, like not everything, um, but like, you know, just my car and like whatever. Yeah, yeah. stuff you wouldn't be using. Exactly. Anymore. Right. E exactly. So then I applied for the, um, what was it F1 visa? It's a student visa. So I applied for school, acting school. They accepted me. Then I studied for one year and you're not allowed to work, not even at Starbucks or McDonald's or anything. You're not even allowed to wash uh, like dishes or anything. Um, which makes it very difficult. Which Basically, makes it difficult. you can only come to America Spend if you have money. money. Yes. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Um, and it was it was hard for me because in Austria, where I lived in Vienna, like rent wasn't that expensive. It was like, OK. And then I came over here and in Burbank, I paid double, like immediately for something 
like half the size. And Burbank's right outside of like the city. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's like a suburb. Exactly. And I was like, okay, that's shocking, but okay, I want to do this. And then school on top of that was expensive as well. And you have to live too. I mean, you need, you need food and, you know. So that was step number one. Then I graduated after a year and got my um, OPT. The OPT. And onto a new visa. That's a new visa, basically. <laughs> that, that means you're allowed to um, work in the field that you studied for one year. So I was done with acting school and went on castings auditions. Just like my, I was so excited. I thought, okay, now I'm going to conquer Los Angeles, You're Hollywood. You're going to be the next Arnold Schwarzenegger. Immediately. In my head, I was like, okay, I'm going to make this. Um, I'm going to make this happen. So I went to all those castings and auditions. And mind you, I only had um, student films on my resume. So I go in there super confident. I'm like, look, did that from Austria. Speak English now. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. We don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So I went in there um, and they were like, mm, your resume, do you have any credits on IMDb? And I'm like, no, no, I just graduated. I'm from Austria, so it's hard for me to, you know. Right. Um, and those, mind you, small roles. It wasn't even like, you know, Warner like Brothers one, or One anything. or two lines. Yeah, yeah like it's an like independent one, film. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and short films and whatever. Um, just some of those were, weren't even paid. I was just like, okay, I want to act. I want to be in front of the camera. Right, right. And I didn't get the opportunity. So I was like, what am I doing here? Like, nobody gives me the chance. Like, I studied so hard. I did all of this um, to get here. And nobody sees that, you know, like spending so much time right. in Austria to get to this point. And then I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? I don't know. Um, and at that point, I met Logan at the gym. <laughs> right. I was like working out um, 11 p.m. for like three, day, three nights in a row. And at one point, I, at that point, I didn't have uh, social media. So I was like, I don't know. He works out a lot. Let's maybe we can work out together. So I'm like, hey, my name is Johannes. I see you work out a lot. And he's like, yeah, Logan. I'm like, all right, nice to meet you. Do you want to work out together? And then we started working out together. Um, and then he invited me over and then I think we watched, uh, I forgot what movie it was with watched you some, and George yeah. and everybody. And even I was like, Jay. who the hell is yeah. this dude? <laughs> He's like, oh, there's this guy I work out with in the gym. I'm like, all right, like, cool. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's how I, how I met all of you guys and got introduced into social media. All right. So before we start talking about social media, mm -hmm. at, where were you in your life? How were you feeling before you met Logan? Like, had, had, were you feeling failure? Were you feeling disappointment? Were you discouraged? Um, definitely discouraged. Not, I mean, I was disappointed because I was like, okay, what else can I do, right? And I was looking for more that I can do because I didn't blame it on anybody else. I was just like, okay, competition is hard. Like, I just need to be better. Right. And I was like, what can I do? And that, that was just like that process. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to keep working out hard. Um, like, and, you know, work on my physique because that's what I have under control because nobody right, can right. take that from me. Um, cause I can work out three hours a day and eat clean. And nobody can take that right, from right. me. So I was like, okay, I'm going to just build that. And whenever I get the opportunity, then I'm ready. So, um, I wasn't too concerned about not making it. Um, but I feel like just, you know, praying and like working and focusing on what I want just basically helped me get into that whole new world of social media. I think that's how the world works. Like you focus on what you want and then the universe just gives it to you. And like, obviously you have to take the step and you need to work for it, but like there's the door. And then it was like social media, right. do you want it? And then I just- Opportunity. Yeah, the opportunity and I walked in there and I was like, okay. How yeah. long did you have left on your visa before you got into social media? Um. I, Maybe another year, right? I, feel I don't like. know. Let me let me think. When was it? When when did I meet you guys? Twenty fifteen, I think. End of yeah, right? December, mm -hmm. November, December two thousand fifteen, something like that. Um, I think I had till September two thousand sixteen. I think. Yeah, like less than a year. Yeah, less than a year. So then you meet Logan. He introduces you to to this whole world of social media, like. Me, even he introduced me. We yeah, like George. basic. But yeah. We became the boys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But before we became the boys in the vlog life, we what made you start doing the Instagram skits? And um, I think so. Like I said, I had no idea about social media. I was just like, so what do you guys do? Are you guys actors too? What's what's happening? No, nah, no, nah, I do Facebook. And, <laughs> and yeah. I was like, what do you mean you do Facebook? And then, um, yeah, you guys showed me. And, uh, then I realized, oh, you were like super talented with the cameras. And I remember we had. 
uh, we met at the pool again. And I was like, hey, can you? I bought this weird ass camera, right, remember? Right. <laughs> and you're like, let me take a picture real quick. Yeah, yeah. And then we started posting, and I was like, oh, that's exciting. Okay, cool. Um, and the first video that I was in was George's video. Remember the one uh, with the the six pack and like a the put, vegan? No, no. In his oh, this laundry room. The laundry one. The right. laundry one. Yeah, I think that was the first one. And from that, um, I gained so many not followers, but like just people were like, "Hey, do you want to be in my video? Do you want to be in my video?" That was so funny. Oh um, yeah, yeah. And then you were the only dude that was ripped. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I was like, see, and it paid off. Like right, right. me, like when everybody said no, me still working out every single day and you know, taking care of my body paid off because I could have said back then when they said, no, 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 no. I'm like, all right, just eat pizza and get fat or whatever. Right, right. Be depressed. But, exactly. But I was so focused and then it turned out to be great because then everybody was like, oh, can I, can I use you in this video? I'm like, sure. Awesome. Right. And that's how I got introduced to that. To get tags. And then what I admire about you, dude, is like, you kind of knew nothing about making videos. Like yeah. you did personal training back home. Yeah. You did real estate and then yeah. you move here to be an actor, study that. Then all of a sudden you get thrown into acting and then it's like, oh shit, I have to create my own shit. Mm -hmm. Like I can't just keep being that guy with his shirt off and yeah. everybody else's shit. So what I admire about you, bro, and honestly, like if you guys are listening, what I admire about German, <laughs> you're not German, <laughs> yeah. but what I've admired about Germans, and I work with a lot of German people, is their fucking work ethic is next level, dude. Like you knew nothing about shooting, you knew nothing about editing, and you took the time, you would stay up and you would learn and practice on your own and you would ask me for help, whatever it may be, but like, I can't do it for you. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So like what I admire about Johannes guys and, and, a, and a big factor that pays off is his work ethic. Like he was working his ass off in the gym and then he was working his ass off learning uh, yeah. how to how to film, how to edit, how to direct just by like observing and always taking the time and being patient and being not afraid to ask questions and get the answers. And then like the cool thing is, is you actually fucking listen yeah. and you <laughs> <laughs> you take notes and you're like, you practice and you're like, oh shit, this is how you, oh, that's how you do it. And I remember you showing me your first edit and I was like, damn dude, like you're a better editor than George. I, re <laughs> I remember, I remember that saying said that, that. Yeah. your first ever edit. I'm like, damn, George can't even do this. And it's just like, and you were like, yeah, I was like watching tutorials and shit. Like you went out there and you took the time to learn and then you were able to build your social media following. So how many you have now on Instagram? Before we, before we move on, um, Cause I want to thank you too. Cause I remember that cause you were the only one who like helped me out when I was like, Hey, this transition on your video, that was so awesome. How did you do that? Right. And then you just showed me and I was like, all right, cool. And what I like, cause that's how I work too. Um, I didn't want you to do it for me. I just wanted you to teach me. Right. You um, watched me do it. Exactly. So remember. I watched you and I was like, okay, can you do it one more time? That was too fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he was like, okay, I just did this, clicked right here, moved it over here, made it longer. This needs to be shorter. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. okay, why needs to be? And so yeah, it worked out and, and you were big help just in the beginning right there when I had no idea about editing and I loved your edits. Like I'm the best editor. Yeah, no doubt no, about it. Yeah, <laughs> no, no doubt about it. It's really good. <laughs> um so yeah, I think we were we were a great team. Thank you, bro. <laughs> Thanks for that shout out on the Mark Donor. Live it large! Live it podcast. large. <laughs> but how many uh, followers do you have now? Uh 1.96. Oh, so almost that point nine six in there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Almost two million. Almost two million. My man's yeah. crushing it on the gram. Mm -hmm. Uh you you do YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. You started making fitness videos. Let's talk let's talk transition from Instagram into YouTube. Yeah. Um how hard was that for you? That was I think it was I can't remember when I first started. I don't want to say a wrong date, but when I the first videos were just fitness. Like I think the very first one was me moving to the United States, being vegan, then right, did I like remember. a, a Q&A video, because a lot of people asked me, hey, what's vegan, what is good, where do you get your protein from? So I did one of these. Um, and then um, I think then I started doing more fitness related videos, but it was just me filming my workouts, not really um, talking about it, Yeah, which was, and now, now I know, but back then I was like, why is it not working, right? Yeah. But, now I understand because I was just working out, but I didn't share any information. No it was, personal. Yeah, exactly. No personality. It exactly. was just like, hey, I'm working out. Exactly. And I, I think, what's the hardest platform so the people know? It, <laughs> the hardest platform? I'd say YouTube. Yeah. For sure. Uh, my suggestion, guys, if you guys are listening, you're trying to get into social media, learn from me, learn from Johannes, start on Instagram. Mm -hmm. It's so much easier to grow on Instagram just because if you make videos on Instagram, you could tag your friends, you could 
You could send them a DM to your friends. Mm -hmm. You could have group chats. It's just more shareable. It's more eyeballs on you. They have a better explore page. YouTube, you have, you literally, unless you're big, like to mm -hmm. start, you know what I'm saying? Like if you throw your followers from Instagram or Facebook over to YouTube, like it's very hard to yeah. grow on YouTube when you have no eyeballs. Exactly. And yeah. it's so much easier if you like hit up your friends on Instagram, like, hey, can you tag your friends? Like, hey, can you share this or whatever? It's so much easier to grow on Instagram. And I think it's easier to to collaborate with people. I don't oh, know course. why, but I think it's like everybody's like, hey, cool, let's do something. Right. 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 Because <laughs> um, it's easy to just take a picture or whatever and then do a live stream or I don't know. Um, Cause that's what we did all the time. We just worked out and then just did some, some, um, Insta stories or whatever. Quick, yeah. Yeah. Quick and collaborations, it, exactly. just real life shit in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Ba -ba -ra! Yo guys, I'm interrupting the podcast to let you know that this episode is brought to you by Casper mattresses. I'm hooking you guys up with a $50 off code. All you have to do is go to casper.com backslash large and use the promo code large at checkout and you guys will get $50 off at select mattresses. Just check out the terms and conditions that apply. You know, you spend one third of your life sleeping, so why not spend it comfortably? You know what I'm saying? It's a funny story. So I have a Casper mattress. My roommate has a Casper mattress. My girlfriend has a Casper mattress. Uh, I was in London last week, and my uh, girlfriend had her friend sleep over, and she said that it was the best night of sleep she's had in a very, very long time. She slept through the night. She had no issues. I have a Casper pillow. Uh, they have pillows. They have blankets they have two types of mattresses the wave and the essential and guys no bullshit this is one of the most comfy mattresses i've ever slept on ever since i've lived in los angeles uh, after i slept on an air mattress for a year in, in a in a closet i've only had casper mattresses guys and i gotta say i sleep damn good every single night you know order the mattress get 50 dollars off and if you don't like it you could sleep on it for a hundred days that's a third of the year. Sleep on it for 100 days, risk-free trial. And if you don't like it, you could send it back. They got free shipping in the United States and Canada, free returns in the United States and Canada, guys. Over 20,000 reviews on the internet and given a 4.8 star overall rating. That's out of five. So I'd say that's an A in school if you guys are all in school. Like I said, just head over to casper.com backslash large. And use the promo code LARGE for $50 off. And you can be sleeping just as good as me every single night. And the cool thing about it, guys, is, is you don't have to go to the store and, like, try out the mattress. And then, like, ask a buddy, like, hey, can I borrow your car? And then throw it in the truck or tie it down to the roof and then have to worry about it flying off on the highway. They literally deliver it to your door in a box. I it, It's mind-boggling because when I got mine, I was like, what, what, what the hell? Like this just came in a box. It's like rolled up. Uh, they do this like airtight compression. You pull it out. You literally take off the airtightness and then poof, it's ready to be slept on, guys. And like I said, guys, 100-day free trial. No hassles. No, no issues with the returns and whatnot. Casper.com backslash large. Use the code large for $50 off courtesy of moi. Back to the podcast. So you got into social media, got into YouTube. Now... You finally got your visa <laughs> yeah. to live here for how long? Uh, until 2020. But right now, I'm, see, that's that's the thing. I got my visa, my O1 visa, which is a talent visa, which I'm very proud of because it took me forever to get Can that. Can I just say something? When I first met this kid, I would ask him, what is he doing? <laughs> Every fucking day, the same thing. It was like, yo, uh... Sorry, bro. Can't hang out. Got to work on my visa. Oh, oh, okay. Duh. What are you doing tomorrow? Oh, I got a meeting with my lawyers just trying to get this visa. Just trying to like be able to stay in America. And I'm like, Jesus, bro. Like, and this is crazy, guys, because we take it for granted being born here. It's like, I'm like, why is it so hard? Like, I'm in America, you know, like this is where I live. But for someone to come here from out of country to try to live here, I didn't realize until I moved to Los Angeles how hard mm -hmm. it is to live in america and my man has stuck to it <laughs> it's taken him so many years and so many hours and probably thousands <laughs> tens of thousands of dollars just to like live here yeah. for another two years <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um but it was totally worth it it's but worth as, it. as soon as i got it um and that's what nobody sees everybody's like oh yeah you have it easy you you have a visa you can work yeah. there but the, to get to that visa to, was hell to get to that point i think i took one week off of like working for like visa stuff i got it i think it was uh, around thanksgiving because i was like oh, they're not gonna call me because now it's thanksgiving now i have to wait another week and my visa is gonna expire i don't know what's gonna happen and then they called me and i was so nervous i was on my phone and amanda filmed it because she knew like she heard that i was talking to my lawyer so she grabbed the phone and filmed me i didn't know this right I'm, <laughs> and i saw the video i'm like this hello 
Yeah. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Because she, she was like, yeah, there's someone else on the line. I'm like, okay. I was like shaking <laughs> like this. Yeah. Okay. I got it. <gasps> Fuck you. <yeah! laughs> I just yelled. I was like tears in my eyes because I was so relieved. I was like, finally, I got it. And then I took a week off of not worrying any, like about anything. And I was right. like, okay, great. I got this. And then as soon as after that week, I was like, okay, let's work on the green card. Because right. I know a one is only for uh, three years. So I immediately started working, called my lawyer again. I was like, hey, so thank you again for that. But now next step, green card. What yeah. do I have to do? What do I need? Just get married. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different story. Yeah. <laughs> Bottom line is, guys, uh, Johannes, when he first came here, he had a whole luscious lock of hair. Now he's bald. <laughs> and the reason he's bald is because he had to get a visa. So if you want to get a visa, you, you have, have to sacrifice, sacrifice your, your hair. hair. <laughs> but I, what, what I admire about you, and this is kind of is the telltale for anybody in my opinion that's kind of successful out here that I've interviewed that I've talked to is you risked it mm -hmm. like you risked everything in Austria to come here to pursue your dreams yeah what how how difficult was that I was that was scary it was probably the back then it was the scariest thing I've ever done in my life um because yeah, I mean, I had to leave everything behind. I didn't, like, I, I spoke a little bit of English, but I wasn't perfect, and I had a thick accent, and I had no I had no friends here, and I had nothing. I didn't have a... How was that, moving, leaving your friends, leaving your family, moving to across the world mm -hmm. by yourself? Yeah, it was, um, there's a, a funny story. So first of all, the entire process of me, you know, selling everything step by step, um, I got into this routine, so I didn't even realize that I'm going to, be gone soon. So I was just like, okay, who wants my car? Okay, I'm gonna sell my car. Okay, I have a bike. Yeah, do you want the bike? Cool, awesome. What about my furniture? I don't need much furniture. Uh, you know, I need to rent my place. Do you know anybody? So I was just constantly doing right. that. And then at one point it's like, um, yo, in a week you'll be gone. And I'm like, yeah, I think so. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Um, and yeah, so I, Everything was cool. Obviously, saying goodbye to my mom and everything was was horrible because everybody cried. And then I got emotional and I was like, please, mom, don't cry. Because it makes me cry. So um, that was hard. But then I, um, you know, was on the plane. Everything was exciting, positive, good energy. I was like, fuck you, I'm going to I'm going to do this. I'm so happy. I'm like, we're coming to America. Exactly. I was like, I was playing mm. on the iPod we had, for like <laughs> 10 hours. <laughs> and then I landed. And this is the this, this is the crazy thing. I touched ground in L.A. and I got I got so scared. Wow. I, I was like what is that like i i, I started crying I, w I looked outside the window and i started crying for no reason i don't know what it was I, I, to this day i don't know why if it was because i was so happy or because i was so scared um because i didn't know anything over here like the the laws are different like how to get a yeah. driver's license how to get this and that and like insurance and whatever right uh so many thoughts and then I get the career i started learning this doing that um so I touched ground and immediately like, it felt like this. What am I doing? Am I making yeah. the right decision? Yeah, I'm making the right decision. Is, is it the biggest mistake in my life? I don't know. Um, but after like, I don't know, like five minutes, I was like, okay, cool. Focus. You got this. And then after that, it was just like work, 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 work. Because I was so focused and I, need, I knew I had to do certain things. I was like, okay, I have to go to class. I have to do this. I need a car. I need a driver's license. I need this. I need insurance. I need to pay that. Da, 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 da. It was yeah, just dude. It, like your story is absolutely crazy. And I admire it so much. And a lot of people don't understand. Like everybody has their own battles. And mm -hmm. you've even had your own personal value, battles with your family and whatnot that you don't even talk about. And it's like you're like a telltale symbol, in my opinion, when I learn more about you that you don't know what someone's going through until you really start to get to know them. So like, yep. like you just like embody, like, I don't know, like to, to always be positive to someone, like, cause you don't know, like if the person walking next to you is having a bad day or mm -hmm. whatever, or what they've been through, what their life story is. And people on Instagram, people on YouTube haven't really seen that. They don't really know like how long it took you to get to America, mm -hmm. what you went through, how much money you saved up, the, the, the time you had to spend busting your ass to make money, to provide for your family, to just just saving up enough, and then you still run businesses back in Austria, yeah. which is so crazy. So like people don't understand. Like yeah, he has two million followers, he makes money in social media, but he still has other businesses, and that's something that people don't really realize about social media. People is like for me personally, for you, for mm -hmm. Logan, for all of us, 
we don't just have social media. Like we don't rely on social media. Yeah, we have yeah. other businesses that we still hustle in that you guys don't see. And Johannes is a perfect example of that. Um, but let's talk about you've gotten all that all the way out of, up to here. We've left mm -hmm. some stuff out. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? Like I know what you're talking about. Um, I, I'm down to share that with your audience. Is it okay. If you want to. Absolutely. Yeah. So what Mark is saying is, um, and that's something I never shared with anybody because I, I didn't want to be like that. Okay. He's, you know, he just wants sob story. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So I kept that to myself because it was very personal and, um, I was just like, I don't want to share that with anybody. Right. right. So when I was 14, or oh, let's, let's go back. I met Mark and then, I don't know, a year later right, after right. I realized, okay, th those, you know, those people are good people. Uh, those are my friends now. Then I think, and I'm pretty sure we, we went out and we were drunk and yeah, then we yeah. talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely was not a sober conversation. And I honestly, I remember the next day I'm like, did Wait, you I really think see he that? said that, but I don't know because I was wasted. <laughs> yeah, so we got drunk um, and emotional. Yeah, <laughs> and then we were um, in a hot tub. No, I don't think it was a hot tub. I think it was like the whatever. It was a party. It was, we it was were drunk. Doesn't doesn't no, matter. No, no. <laughs> whatever it was. Um, and then I just just told him that when I was 14 years old, that my um, father passed away, and then a couple of years later, my brother committed suicide. Um, which was obviously like super hard for me. Like I lost my dad at 14 and I'm not saying, Oh my God, please, you know, give me something because mm -hmm. I'm so whatever. Um, that's why I never talked about it because I know some people have it even worse. Right. And, and this you, is for me, it was really hard to just grow up without, without a dad. And then, you know, my, my brother was older and I was like, okay, I just, I, st I still have my brother. And then one day my mom calls me two days before Christmas crying, which hurt me immediately. Cause I heard her crying and she was like, your brother committed suicide. And I was like, wait, what? Like, I was like, what? I was, I was like, why didn't he call me? Why, why wasn't I? Th so I was like, it's my fault. Like mm -hmm. I could have been there for him, but I had, then I, it took me a while to realize it's not my fault because it was his decision. Like he knew I was there and you could never, you'd never be like, um, you know, well, it just, it's just like, it goes just like, you just never know what someone's going through. And exactly. And like, guys, like if you're ever feeling something, you always reach out, speak out because you didn't know you had yeah, no exactly. idea. I had no idea. And if I knew I would have helped him, obviously right. I would have been there for him. Um, so but this for, this for the I'm, audience, like if someone's out there having those thoughts, just please talk to someone like there's always you might think, OK, there is no way out. There's always a way out. Always. Right. And this just honestly, like when I heard this story from Johannes, I, I remember the day I'm like, damn, like this dude's been through so much. And then I heard this and I'm like, on top of that, you lost your father, you lost your brother all within two years at a young age. So no, 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 it was not two years. It was uh, 2002 and then uh, 2010, eight years. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. But still, at a young age, man, like then it's it's you and your mom. Mm -hmm. And then you make that decision. All right, I'm going to America. And now <laughs> it's like you're by yourself. Your mom's by yourself. Like, yeah. And for you to come from all of those those hills in your life and, and overcome them, like... And this just speaks to your story and how you don't know what anyone's going through. And it speaks to how hard you've worked for what mm -hmm. you have. And that's like, it's like, makes me like, it gives me so much inspiration, bro. And so like me and Johannes, we have this relationship where we just motivate each other. In my mm -hmm. opinion, like I see you working, you'd be like, Hey, I'm out, I'm up editing. I'm like, Oh fuck, I got to do something. <laughs> like, that's what I love about you, dude is like, you're always just working you're grinding you're trying to reach your goals you're setting new goals you're never settling and that's the difference in my opinion that separates you from all the other people in social media and in even in the fitness mm -hmm. like as much as hard as fitness has been for you and how easy comedy was mm -hmm. you're you're setting aside com well you're still doing comedy yeah. but you're like fuck my passion is fitness and i'm gonna work my ass off until fitness is my life exactly and that's what and you've been doing that mm -hmm. and now talk about Starting off, what do you got going on? Body by bottle. Exactly. Yeah. So um, you, you made a great point. Like I started with fitness on YouTube and it didn't do well. And then, um, you know, everybody started vlogging and which was like comedy. So mm -hmm. I did that too. And I got the views and I got the numbers and it felt good. I was like, okay, cool. 
but I wasn't happy. Right. It doesn't ever, like, it never translates. Yeah. I was like, okay, so I have the numbers, I got the subscribers, but I'm not happy. Like I want to, I want to share my workouts. That's what I'm passionate about. That's, that's Don't where my, why, but that's, you are. <laughs> that's where my knowledge is. Like, I, I work it out. <laughs> it's like, I know so much about fitness and I want to share that with people because I know some people don't know certain things and they want to get ripped and they want to get buff or whatever. And I can help them with that. So um, at one point I was just like, okay, vlogging enough. I need to focus on like what matters to me because I know that matters to people too. It just takes longer. Um, but yeah, I learned I need to have patience and yeah. now I have it. Um, obviously still like, I wish <laughs> everything could be faster, but still like, I, I know the process and yeah. So now I'm working on my website, bodybybottle.com. Say it in English. <laughs> that is English. Body, Body by bottle. Bartle, B-A-R-T-L, your last name. Sorry, I had to give it an English translation Thank you. There. Thank you. Yeah. It's B-A-R-T-L. <laughs> Doing the plug for you. Which um, dude, honestly it works. Cause like I worked out for, with you for what? A few months. Mm-hmm. And I saw mad results. Yeah. And what fucked me was I went home and my mom was like, oh, you've been working out for three, four months. You're good. You can have some fucking meatloaf. And I had the meatloaf. And then the next day I had pizza. And the next day I had pasta. And I came back to LA. And every night I was getting pizza. And I'm a fat fuck. And I need to get back on the Body by Bato program. Here we go. Yeah, we, we, before I got here. Um, we talked about the the new program that I have on my website right now. It's a 30 day challenge. Um, you work out six days a week, one day off. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Like I did it too. I lost five or six pounds in one month, um, but gained strength. So I'm back on my four and, or five I mean, deadlifts and stuff. Five or six pounds doesn't seem like a lot, but like you're pure muscle and you have exactly. no fat. So like exactly. for you to lose five pounds, exactly. like if I would have done that shit, I would have lost. Well, I probably would have stayed the same weight. I would just transferred it to muscle. Mm-hmm. That's my plan. And I think we should do that. I send you the workout plan and um, I'll go with you like through every single day. So you know exactly what to do. And then you will see um, probably like, what do you weigh right now? Do you want to share 187, that? 187, 190. Oh, that's not, that's, oh, that's easy. So we could probably get you to 182, like clean. With muscle? Yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah. So if you're 190 right now, like 182, 183, that's possible. But but, but like in a in a healthy right uh, way. That is it you vegan? Because you're vegan. I'm vegan. Yes. Yes. So is this program vegan? Um, the workout plan, like everybody can do it. Um, but I would recommend trying, you know, plant based diet because you lose so much fat. Yeah. It's so easy. Look at Logan Paul. <laughs> yeah. He was like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously he worked his ass off. Yeah. Um, well, he went vegan but, too. Yeah, but the diet is When real. I did my shit with you, I was vegan. Yep. The only yep. thing I didn't not do vegan, which I found out later, was my protein with had whey in it. Yeah, yeah, you had the, the wrong protein Wrong powder. protein. Yeah. Like everything, but my everything whole else, diet was mm-hmm, vegan. And mm-hmm. I was eating some crazy shit that was tasty as fuck. Yeah, I remember <laughs> when I first made you the, the vegan gains bowl. Yeah. And you were like, this is delicious. I'm I like, had it every day. Yeah, I remember when I had my first apartment down there, the, 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 the cave. Yeah, yeah, the worst apartment <laughs> in the building. <laughs> I had, I had it. <laughs> My man had to go in the living, the worst apartment, the cheapest apartment. Yeah, the cheapest apartment uh, in the building. Just adds to the struggle. Yeah, adds to it. I didn't have any sunlight. <laughs> no, it was a dungeon. <laughs> but I was, I was there where I wanted to be. Anyways, I think we should do that. Yeah, that, that I'm sounds, that down. sounds good. Yeah. How about what is it? What, what's Wednesday? Thursday? Wednesday? It's gonna be Thursday when I post this. Okay, so um, let's start Monday. Oh boy. Yeah, I better eat. Who wants to get some pizza with me this week? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you better do that now. <laughs> but, Monday, uh, you and my program. Well, now that we've got like a lot of your life story. Yep, talked about what? What's some advice you would give to the viewer, the the foreign viewer, or oh, even, okay. or even the viewer from across the world that wants to come to LA, be in social media, be an actor? Okay, so number one, um, you need to know that you need a lot of money if you want to move to LA. Burbank, like anything Hollywood, right. like close. You need to have here. some money saved up, or you need to come out here and you need to get a job. That's yeah. if you guys have watched the previous podcast. That is, even when I had a million followers, I mm-hmm. still had a job. Yeah, you know, because mm-hmm. I didn't make money. Yeah, but but for you, it's easy because you just you it's know, easy. It's easy. <laughs> I remember that too. <laughs> no, but you can just you know get a job and work and work on right, something right. else. But for someone from Austria, Germany, whatever, Spain, yeah. I don't know. Um, if you can't work legally, you can't 
work legally and i'm <laughs> like i i never did anything because i was so scared i was like i love this country so much you'll get deported if you yeah, fuck around yeah. yeah if you fuck around you get deported and then it's over then you you're not allowed to come to the u.s for 10 years i know some years. people that aren't gonna leave because if they leave they'll never be back exactly so they've overstayed their visas exactly you know what i'm you, talking about and then you can't travel you can't do anything like imagine you just want to be like hey let's go to canada for this whatever brand deal and then you're like mm, no can't okay yeah <laughs> why no, they won't let me back in <laughs> yeah exactly so just be just know that you need money to be here unless you are um Married. a scientist yeah that, that's another thing like i i know everything about it you can marry someone from the united states <laughs> and then uh you get that you can join the army within two weeks you're a citizen you're not even a green card you're a citizen <laughs> oh, wow. within two weeks but you have to be in the army for two years oh, wow. um and so if you they, know all the rules, I know everything about that. Like, yeah, I knew because I wanted, and that's another thing. You need to know your options. You can't just be like, okay, I want this. And if this doesn't work out, I'm fucked. So I knew everything. And then I just waited. I'm like, I don't want to join the military. What I love about you is you actually, you worked your ass off to get the hardest one. <laughs> yeah, it was the hardest like, one. You could have joined the military, had it. You could have gotten married, had, had it. it. <laughs> but you went for the hardest one that took you five years to get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my lawyer said the same thing. He was like, do you have a girlfriend? And at that time, I was like, no. He's like, oh, okay. I'm like, why? Find one. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, you could marry, you know, someone, and then you need to be with that person for two years, and then you get your green card. Like, you get your green card right away, but you have to stay right, with that person for two years. Obviously, you can't just marry some stranger. No. Well, you, like People that, do it, but, like, you yeah. can get caught. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's like, if you want to do the legal way, the, the way that I did it, save up some money um lots of it yeah lots of it and then <laughs> lose it all like, and then know exactly what you want to do like if it's acting go study acting i know it is expensive but it is worth it you're going to learn the language so fast so quickly just immer yeah, immerse just, yourself in the culture just, yeah just being in acting school and like speaking in front of people every single day helped me a lot because obviously when you don't speak the language and you come to another country english is the only only language yeah. you are like uh, I don't. <clears throat> hey, Mar Mar Mark, how are, are, are you? Was is doing? <laughs> right? It's weird. So you reckon Sie Deutsch? A piece of yeah. Um, I don't know. You just sit back. <laughs> <laughs> so um, in acting school for me it was just like I, they forced me to speak every single day, and then I lost that fear of like fucking up because I know I was like, right. okay, it's fine. Like I'm not from here. I'm studying. I'm learning. I'm getting better every single day. And maybe that's that's an important thing. Don't be afraid to fail. Just know that you have to get back up and keep going there there will be so many obstacles in your way like whatever goal it is it's not just acting like if you want to be a professional basketball pl basketball player or right. whatever there will be obstacles just keep going keep going and like work on it every single day Anything I, I mean i think too uh the risk is very important mm -hmm. yeah you like you said the willingness to fail and the most important in your case, in my opinion, is Jake Paul always said this hard work beats talent. Mm -hmm. Like you may not be the most talented person, but if you work the hardest, you will always surpass those that are talented because the talented ones take it for granted. They're like, oh, I don't need to practice. I'm mm -hmm. good enough. But the ones that work hard soon enough are going to surpass. And the more videos you make, the more you create, the more you learn the more talented you'll be. So if you have passion, if you have drive, like your man, Johannes over here, mm -hmm. You're going to move to America. It's going to suck for a little bit. It's going to be for very a long hard. Time. You're going to have no <laughs> friends. You're going to have no family. You're not going to be able to leave. You're not mm -hmm. going to be able to make any money. But then one day, it'll all pay off all the hard work you've put in. And that's for me, too. That's the same thing. The amount of videos I made for free. Mm -hmm. No money was paid to me. I was just making videos because I love to do it on my side. Finally, one video hit. And then all of those videos paid off. And that's kind of the story about social media, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You work for free for a very long time. You have a lot of hardships. You're like, why, is, why aren't I popping off? Why isn't it me? And then finally, one day, it'll happen. And then the next day, you're dating Amanda Cerny or Kylie Ray. <laughs> I got to say, Johannes and I, we've done pretty fucking good for ourselves. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if, if it, how it's for you, but like when I first started, um, it was a different feeling too because I knew I needed that for my uh, 01. Like I knew this is going to help me get my 01. But after a while, like when I, I don't know, a certain number, like I, I forgot about the number and I was like, what am I doing? And then I wanted to give back to my 
followers, my, my supporters, because those people like they help, they make it all happen. Like, right. Right. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, okay, what can I do for them? And as soon as I switched to how can I help my audience and how can I make them happy? Everything was so easy. Mm -hmm. Like it just exploded and I got so many opportunities. I'm like, okay, it is about content. It's about what you provide. It's not just, yeah, just yeah, follow never me. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Bro, honestly, this has been a really good talk. It flowed very nicely. Yeah, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We need to it's hang out to, privately. Yeah, as, yeah, we need to actually hang out. We haven't seen each other. I moved across the way. Yeah. But he's moving close to me soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you, my boy. My Is this boy? Simone? Is this Simone? <laughs> That's episode five of Live It Large. Don't forget you can listen to it at 6 a.m. every Wednesday on CastBox and then on noon on my YouTube channel. You can watch it in video form to see our beautiful faces. Show them the abs one time. I can show. I can he'll, show, he'll, show the he'll show the guns. <laughs> that, you, got, you can only get that on the YouTube channel. But that's it, guys. Episode five. We'll see you next week. Live it large. <laughs> Later, guys. Oh. <laughs>